Welcome to Mark Gibson's Human Risk Channel. Accountant with the Signation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Astralda. Enjoy learning! Okay, so good morning class and welcome to your financial management course. Today we'll discuss about statement of cash flows. So expect that this session will be uh, a lengthy uh, session, but um, we'll also I'll, I'll make sure to provide you some inputs, and um, I'll also make sure that uh, all the concepts around statement of cash flows will be understood not towards the end of our discussion. So. Uh, our learning objectives, of course, number one is to articulate the nature and purpose of statement of cash flows, integrate the, integrate the concept and components of cash and cash equivalent. So later on, we'll discuss um, uh, what qualifies as cash and uh, what qualifies as cash equivalents. No? And then finally, we'll um, analyze and solve cash flows no and uh, classify it as to operating investing and financing we'll also cover um, direct and indirect methods of uh, calculating for your operating investing and and financing net cash flows no? so Statement of cash flows is a component of financial statements summarizing the operating, investing, and financing activities of an entity. It provides information about the cash receipts and cash payments of an entity during a period. So, as you know, this is also an integral part of the financial statements for each period. No? So, you have your uh, your balance sheet, your income statement, and then statement of cash flow is also one of those financial statements required by um, uh, different uh, stakeholders and as well as government no? and uh, uh, other agencies. No? Um, okay, so now let, let's discuss first. No, since as you know, cash in in, in um, creating your cash flow statement, we're actually just dealing with the cash movements. You know, but uh, so at this stage, it is just uh, fair to define what cash is and uh, what comprises cash. No, so cash comprises cash on hand and demand deposits. No. And then cash equivalences are short-term, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to known amount of cash and which are subject to insignificant risk of change in value. So when is an investment qualifies as a cash equivalent? So when it has a short-term maturity of three months or less from date of acquisition. Okay, class, I think uh, we have to... Um, illustrate this no so uh, for example uh, you have um, uh, you have a certificate of deposit oh, sige, lang, no? certificate of deposit whose maturity is in in uh, three months no kailan mo siya na purchase sabi natin na uh, september so september ngayon Maturity, period, maturity niya is in uh, uh, December. So, September, October, November, December. So, pasok siya within three months from date of acquisition. No? So, sa September acquisition natin, magmamature siya in, uh, by December. So, October, November, December, three months. In that case, it will fall under cash equivalents. Huh? So what if meron kang uh, short-term investment, no? so sabi natin treasury bills, no? uh, whose maturity is within the next or in, in six months' time. So again, that instrument or that treasury bill will no longer fall under cash equi equivalents, but rather in your short-term investment. No? So, yun lang naman yung difference non class. So, again, in order for an instrument or, or short or um, uh, short term investment to qualify as cash equivalent, it has to be 
uh, it has to have a maturity of three months or less from date of acquisition. So, class, important na, uh, na ma-understand natin at this stage yung date of acquisition. No? So, later on, we'll also uh, illustrate that, that by way of um, solving a problem. Okay, so what are the examples of cash equivalent? So number one, yeah, three-month BSP treasury bills. So basically, class, treasury bills, uh, these are government-issued uh, bills. Naman, you know? So uh, these are uh, short-term and at the same time guaranteed by the government. And of course, when we say guaranteed, not so the risk of... Um, uh, non-collectability is really nil, no? For the reason that this being secured by the government, and as you know, government has unlimited funds, naman, you know? So, uh, next three-year maturity, three-year treasury bill purchased three months before date of maturity. So, ito class, ah, uh, the treasury bill is for three years, no? But then, uh, we purchase it three months before date of maturity and therefore this uh, instrument will fall under our cash equivalent no? so of course we have three month time deposit and three month money market instrument or commercial paper tandaan ulitin ko lang yun no so for an investment for short term investment to qualify as cash equivalent kailangan um the maturity will be uh, in three months, no? From the date of acquisition. No? So I hope that clear that that's clear enough. Um, now, uh, what are the classifications of cash flow? So, class, uh, in actually in preparing your statement of cash flow, what we're accounting for in this in 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 this statement is actually the movement of your cash. So imagine na. Uh, uh, syempre, when you're um, operating a business, syempre, meron ka sales, no? So, ito na lang. Pag, uh, sabihin lang natin na uh, small time and small uh, size in entrepreneur ka, no? So, ano bang pwede natin example? Sabihin lang natin na bookshop, no? So, nagbebenta ka ng mga uh, Accounting books, no? Ganyan na lang. Kasi syempre online, gusto mo up-to-date up ka pa rin. So you have to, uh, of course, source out, no? Source out for cheap accounting books. And that's, you can sell it at a margin, no? So sabihin lang natin na, uh, yun nga, uh, you own a bookshop, online bookshop, na. So, saan, saan nagagaling yung cash mo? Of course, pag nakabenta ka, meron ka cash inflow. At the same time, meron ka naman cash outflow pag babayaran mo na yung supplier mo ng mga accounting books. No? Basically, meron kang beginning cash. Sabi natin January 1, meron kang beginning cash. And then meron kang ending balance towards um, the end of the year, so December 31. Ang ina-account natin in statement of cash flow will be the movement. No? Ano yung mga transactions? Uh, from beginning to end of the year uh, na nagkaroon ng inflow and outflow ng cash. No? So, at palaging tandaan, in statement of cash flow, of course, ang focus natin is cash movements. No? So right now, what we're trying to do here is we're classifying uh, the cash flow as to, number one, operating activities. Number two, investing activities. And number three, financing activities. Ngayon, isa-isahin natin ano yung uh, definition or ano yung mga activities included no, in this classification. So let's start off with um, operating activities. No? Operating activities are the cash flows derived primarily from the principal revenue producing activities of the entity. So in our given example, it's actually the sale of books. No? So that's the principal revenue producing activities. Okay, Investing activities so, are the cash flows derived 
from the acquisition and disposal of long-term assets and other investments not included in cash equivalents. No? So the operative word here, class, is investing activities relate to long-term assets. So, ano ba yung mga long-term assets natin? So, say, syempre, uh, sabi natin nag-expand, nag-expand yung bookshop natin. From being online, aba, uh, nag-expand tayo, kailangan na natin ngayon bumili ng uh, store. Ganun ka big time na, no? So, of course, when you purchase a building, oh, hindi lang basta pala store, building pala itong pinag-uusapan natin. When you purchase a building, that uh, will fall under investing activities. Okay? So, uh, right now, what we're trying to do is, I'm, I'm introducing the concept, no? but later on, it will uh, it will make a lot of sense no? when we go to the discussion problem. So, uh, bear with me muna on, on the theoretical part. All right. Next is the financing activities. Are the cash flows derived from the equity capital and borrowings of the entity. So class, in financing activities, this relate to the shareholder's equity account and uh, your non-current liabilities. No? So ito yung mga uh, uh, capital inducements. No? So paano ba, ta paano ba tayo nakakapag-raise ng capital? Number one, syempre, by uh, selling shares. No? So pasok yun doon sa uh, shareholders equity natin. Number two is through uh, borrowings. No? So pasok naman siya doon sa long term, uh, I mean non long term liabilities natin so like, like uh, in the form of bonds or, or mortgage. No? So that's financing activities. Now what are the examples of cash flow? So again, balikan natin. Ha? Uh, under operating activities, this include activities from the primary revenue or primary revenue uh, generating activities no so meaning ito talaga yung um, activities involving your trade no? so number 1 cash receipts from sale of goods and rendering of services no so kasi uh, of course um, cash flow statement being an integral part of financial statements and as you know hindi lang naman trading ang um, nagpe-prepare ng financial statement. It also includes those um, entities offering services. And that's why, uh, syempre, pag meron ka cash receipts, these this, this are your revenue, no? So, from sale of goods and rendering of services. Number two, cash receipts from royalties, rental, fees, commission, and other revenue. So, meaning, um, meron ka rin nare-receive na money or, or cash in uh, in this transaction. So, meron kang cash inflow. Ano naman yung mga cash outflows natin? Meaning, disbursement, no? Ano yung mga binabayad natin? Yun nga, gaya kanina sa example natin, meron tayong supplier. So, we have to pay our suppliers. No? Uh, also, we have to pay for our selling and admin and other expenses, no? So, meron tayong bookstore. Siyempre, hindi namang, uh, dahil nga nag-expand tayo, we have to hire. No? So, we have to pay for, for payroll. We also have to pay for uh, maintenance. No? Kasi syempre gusto natin malinis yung bookshop natin. No? So, we, we pay for all those expenses. You know? Next, uh, cash receipts and cash payments of insurance enterprise for premiums, claims, annuities, and other policy benefits. So, again, uh, for, for example, letter E, this is a combination of inflow and outflow. Inflow, kung uh, say uh, you're, you're claiming no, from the insurance policy. So sabi natin, no, uh, knock on wood, nasunog yung bookshop natin. Kaka-expand na, nasunog na ngayon. Of course, dahil nga nagbabayad tayo ng premiums for um, insurance, so meron tayong fire insurance. No? So in that case, we can claim from uh, the insurance company. No? Paano naman pag uh, cash payment? Yun na yung monthly na binabayad natin you know, for, for, that, uh, for the insurance premium. No? Next, we have cash payments or refunds of income taxes unless 
they can be specifically identified with financing and investing activities. Pag-usapan natin to. So generally, class, uh, your payment and refund of income taxes will flow will fall under operating activities. Bakit? Kasi nga, um, lahat, di ba, pinag, pag pinag-usapan natin, operating activities, ito yung principal um, revenue generating activities. no So, uh, in that case, even tax, syempre, di ba, nagbenta ka, so you have to pay tax. May kinita ka, you have to pay tax. So, that fall under operating activities. Anong sinasabi lang ng letter F? So, in any cases where those taxes can be specifically identified as to financing and investing, dun mo lang ilalagay siya under financing and investing. Kasi ayaw naman natin mangyari na nilagay na natin siya sa operating, inilagay pa natin siya sa financing. No? So, magkakaroon ng double take-up. No? So, again, uh, default under operating unless otherwise stated. No? So, pag silent ang problem, Let's put it under operating activities. Pero pag sumisigaw, sinasabi na na problem, oh, ilagay mo ako sa financing, by all means, let's put it under financing. No? Okay, so uh, example letter G, cash receipts and payment for securities held for dealing or trading purposes. O class ha, uh, uh, in, in example letter G, ang operative word here is trading purposes. So meaning we are getting those securities for the intention of selling, no? So kailan lang magka, magka qualify ang investment or this uh, securities under operating activities only if it's being held for trading purposes. So later on we'll all, I have, I have also prepared a problem, no? So uh, this to reinforce this uh, concept no? on, on securities held for trading. Okay, so what are the classic examples of investing activities naman? So remember, no, balikan natin yung initial discussion natin. When we speak of investing activities, uh, these are related to your long-term or your non-current assets. Siyempre, on top of your mind, ano ba yung mga uh, non-current assets natin? Of course, your property, plant, and equipment, your equity or, or debt instruments. No? So, let, letter A, cash payments to acquire property, plant, and equipment, intangibles. So, yan yung mga um, uh, goodwill, copyright, patent, and other long-term assets. No? So, of course, pag... Bumili tayo ng building, kaya yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina, meron tayong cash outflow kasi maglalabas ka ng pera. Next, cash receipts from sales of property, plant, and equipment, intangibles, and long, long-term long assets. So ito, ibibenta na naman natin yung building kasi nga gusto natin lumipat sa mas magandang building. No? So yung pagbebenta natin nun ng building na yun, of course, uh, meron tayong receive na money. So that's cash inflow. So remember ulit, ha, in statement of cash flow, we're actually talking about the cash movements. No? So basically, yung inflow and outflow. No? So, kaya mapapansin nyo, lahat ng examples natin involves inflow and outflow. No? So pag may na-receive ka, that's inflow. Pag may binayaran ka, outflow. No? So ganun lang naman talaga yung concept. No? So letter C, cash payments to acquire equity or debt instruments. So again, non-current uh, asset. No? So your investment in associate, your uh, investment. Yes. So sabihin natin may, mayroong joint venture. No? So that's that's uh, will will form part of your uh, non-current asset or non-current investment. Of course, pag binenta mo naman yung, mga, yung, yung sales of equity, so meron ka ulit na receipt, no? Uh, next, cash advances and loans to other parties. Ha? Pero take note class, it should be other than advances and loans made by financial institution. Kasi if it's a loan made by financial institution, it will fall under financing activities. Okay? Okay, next, cash receipts from repayment of advances and loans made to other parties. Of course, uh, 
kung meron ka na-receive uh, this time, mer- uh, ito naman yung uh, bayad sa'yo. No? So, meron ka receive na payment. Cash payments for future contract, forward contract, option contract, and swap contract. So, basically, class, these are derivatives. Uh, siguro, briefly, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this. Uh, there will be a separate discussion for this. It could be in financial management, but uh, definitely it, this will be uh, this will form part of your financial market class, no? Okay, but basically future contract or this this uh, forward contract option and swap, uh, this is uh, collectively referred to as a, as derivative. So basically. <clears throat> Sabihin lang natin tong future contract, no? So, you're setting up a price uh, this time for a future transaction. Also, uh, uh, siguro, uh, example natin, uh, you're, you're, you would like to purchase a machine, no? In, uh, of course, your money is in peso. The machine is payable. Uh, you, you would like to buy a machine for, sabihin lang natin, 100,000 USD. So what you would like to do is you you would like to set up the price now. Remember, you know, the machine is payable in three months' time. So you're setting up the price now so that you mitigate the risk of paying more in three months' time. No? But then in in, in uh, derivatives like that, ang kailangan lang natin ma-ensure is uh, we're recording it correctly. No? So again, uh, for the cash payments and cash receipts, that will fall under your investing activities. <clears throat> okay, so pag-usapan naman natin next is financing activities. So kanina, ang sabi natin, uh, when we speak of financing activities, ang kailangan lang lagi natin tandaan, this relate to your shareholders' equity and at the same time your um, long-term liabilities. So, pag long-term liabilities, ano mo na agad? Yan yung uh, 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 bonds, no? So, so, letter A, cash receipts from issuing shares. So, yan na nga. Nag-issue ka na share, meron ka more receive na money. Cash payment to owners to acquire or redeem enterprises share. So, once you have issue the share, meron ka namang option to buy it back. No? So, ito naman yung letter B. Cash receipts from issuing the ventures, loans, the ventures class is basically it's a loan without collateral. No? So, at least um, you know that part. No? So, notes, uh, bonds, mortgages, and other short or long-term borrowings. No? Cash payments for amounts borrowed, of course, nangutang ka, so this time magbabayad ka. No? Even yung ibabayad mo will fall under financing activities. Cash payments by lessee for the reduction on the outstanding principal lease liability. No? So that um, this is now in the leasing contract. Mm. Okay, so now there are two methods in reporting your cash flow. No? So na- number one, we have the direct method. And the other one is indirect method. No? Basically, class, indirect method is um, you, you just have to itemize no? whatever uh, cash movements you have. So, paano yun? Uh, sabi natin na nakabenta ka at the same time nagbayad ka doon sa supplier mo. So, you just have to itemize it no? one by one. Sulat mo lahat ng cash receipts mo. Sulat mo lahat ng cash uh, payments mo. And whatever will be the the uh, net amount, yun yung ire-report natin as um, operating, investing, or financing activities. No? <clears throat> so, direct method shows in detail yun nga, or itemizes the major classes of gross cash receipts and gross cash payments. No? Cash receipts are listed one by one. So, like I said, cash payments are listed one by one and the difference represents the net cash flow. Oh, ito, tandaan class, direct method is applicable to all three classifications. No? So, operating, investing, and financing activities. So, pag direct method, this is applicable to all three classifications. What about indirect method? So, for indirect method, tandaan, 
this is only applicable to operating activities. No? So the standard, no, accounting standards um, only allow indirect method uh, when we're solving for operating activities. No? So meaning this is not applicable for uh, investing and financing activities. So pag financing and investing activities ang pinag-uusapan natin, direct method lang. Okay? <clears throat> So, indirect method means that the net income or loss is adjusted for the effects of transactions of a non-cash nature and deferrals or accruals of past or future operating cash receipts and payments and items of income or expenses associated with investing and financing activities. So, basically, class, in indirect method, uh, the starting point will be your net income, no? So imagine your um, income statement. No? So you have your sales, your cost of sales, diba? Meron ka gross margin, less, uh, less your admin and ad, uh, your admin selling and other expenses. So pasok na rin dyan yung depreciation. So your, your taxes, of course, mag arrive ka ngayon sa net income. Ang pinag-uusapan lang naman dito sa indirect method, meron ka net income, pero... Um, to calculate the net income, meron ka mga sinasamang expenses or revenue na wala naman talagang cash effect. Ano yun? Sige. Uh, one good example is depreciation. No? So, in an annual basis, sabihin na natin straight line method ang gamit mo, no? uh, you're depreciating a machine. The value of machine is depreciating. Sabihin natin 25,000 pesos per year. No? you're recording the depreciation pero in reality wala naman talagang cash no so wala ka naman lalabas na cash no by uh, recording your depreciation no so it's debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation so walang cash doon no walang cash movement but then to calculate for your net income anong effect ng depreciation expense is it an increase or a decrease to your net income so dal expense nga siya dinadadak mo siya, so nababawasan yung net income mo. So, ang sinasabi lang ng indirect method, kailangan natin identify ano yung mga uh, uh, revenues and expenses na included dun sa income statement natin na wala namang cash effect. No? So, later on, uh, we'll also illustrate that. No? So, ngayon, medyo uh, parang toxic, no? Kasi ang daming theoretical part no but later on like i said i'll be providing a cheat sheet no parang guide or or template no at least uh, that will serve as your your guide to calculate problems around the cash flow statement no padadaliin natin to all right no okay so what are the general guidelines for the adjustments of net income to cash basis so this is still in the indirect method huh? so imagine class huh? in indirect method the starting point will be the net income so yeah, meron ka net income ano ano ngayon yung mga adjustments na kailangan nating uh, i-account para ngayon makuha natin yung uh, total cash balance or cash basis. No? So number one, all increases in trade non-cash current assets are deducted from net income. All decreases in trade non-cash current assets are added from net income. So basically we have eight guidelines here but later on I'll be going to share with you a cheat sheet nga no? so para mas madaling matandaan para meron ka guide on how to calculate um, problems using indirect method no? okay so ang tandaan nyo lang dito class ah, ang pinapakita na kailan ba malaman kung direct or indirect yung method na gagamitin of course ah uh, you, uh, in 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 an indirect uh, method, ang pinapakita lang is mga increase or decrease, no? So, yun yung pinaka uh, sabi natin na uh, trigger, no? When to use 
indirect method. Kasi remember, no? Pag direct method, you just have to itemize it, no? Parang bibigyan ka ng 10 accounts or 10 activities. Classify mo lang whether operating, investing, or financing, and that's it, no? And then, na-discuss na natin kanina ano-ano yung mga activities na uh, magka-qualify as operating, investing, and financing. Parang mas madali na ngayon, no? Madali na sa atin na uh, ma-itemize yun, no? The challenge here is in using the indirect method. But like I said, there will be uh, a template or, or guide that I'll be sharing with you later. No? So number three, all increases in the current liabilities are added to the net income. Decreases naman are deducted to net income. Of course, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina, depreciation, amortization. Amortization, ito naman yung mga sa intangible natin, no? intangible assets. And other non-cash expenses are added back. Oh, so, yan yung pinag-usapan natin kanina na depreciation. So, imagine, uh, nag-record ka ng depreciation expense, nabawasan ng net income mo, but then, wala naman talagang cash involved doon. No? So, we have to add it back to our uh, net income. No? Next, any gain or on disposal of property or gain on uh, early retirement of non-trade liabilities is included in net income. But again, it is non-operating item. Thus, this is deducted from net income. Kasi nga, saan nga ito nagka-qualify class? Saan yung gain on disposal or of property? So, kanina na pag-usapan natin, that will form part of your investing activities. no? And that's uh, also... No? Even the loss on disposal of property no? or, or gain on retirement of non-trade liabilities, again, that's, uh, that's, that, that's not an, an operating item. So, under siya ng uh, investing activity. And number eight, finally, other non-cash income or gain is deducted from net income and other non-cash expenses or loss is added to net income to eliminate the effect on net income. Alright? Sige. Uh, before I proceed with discussion problem one, what I'd like to do is uh, what I'd like to do is to do a wrap up muna. Ano ba yung mga na-discuss ko na bago natin i-apply sa problem? Ito na yung cheat sheet na sinasabi ko kanina. No? Uh, okay. Sige. So remember class uh, during the introduction no, earlier what i mentioned about the statement of cash flow is we're actually just accounting the cash movements so ito lang talaga yung focus natin dito so kunbawa january 1 uh, so begin of the year meron ka 200,000 na cash sabihin natin 200,000 cash by december 31 Nagkaroon ka ngayon ng 1 million na cash. No? So, definitely, meron ka naging movement dito na 800,000. Ang ginagawa lang ng statement of cash flow is to identify saan ba galing tong 800,000. Is it from operating, from investing, or from financing activities? Yun yung kailangan natin uh, alamin. No? Basically, in... Uh, uh, in a statement of cash flow. Okay? So again, ang focus natin is yung inflow and outflow of cash. No? Kanina rin, uh, the discuss natin and we differentiate or uh, we've uh, enumerated uh, what are the activities falling under operating. No? So sabi natin, operating activities yan pag involve in the calculation of net income kapag trade current and non-current asset and liabilities no ang pan, ang ang operative word dito class is trade so meaning this is being used uh, in the day-to-day -day operation no so ano ano ba yan um your your assets no your uh, inventory, your uh, account, even even accounts payable, you know. So that that's uh, also included in your current and non-current uh, liabilities, no. That's um, your your current liabilities, no. 
So under investing activities naman plus, uh, papasok dito yung acquisition and disposal of non-current assets. No? Example nga natin kanina is your um, property, plant, and equipment. It also includes non-trade current assets, no? So like uh, your your investment in in associate or in in joint venture, no? And um, in financing activities, naman, papasok dito yung mga long-term liabilities natin and equity accounts, no? So meaning these are activities to finance the business. So, ulitin natin, no? When do we um, source out capital for the business is it, it's through um issuance of shares so again equity accounts or through loans no so uh through long term loans no or or bonds for 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 example so we also discuss about the uh, methods no of calculating no? kanina we've also uh mentioned that uh, for operating activities, we can use either direct or indirect method. But for investing and financing activities, only direct method is allowed. No? So I hope that that's uh, clear. Ngayon, uh, let's differentiate. Ito na yung guide na sinasabi ko. No? For direct method, basically, we're just itemizing. No? We're listing one by one what are all our receipts and what are our disbursements, no? And then we can arrive with the net cash use or net cash provided, no? So basically, when we say net cash use, uh, if the net balance is negative, so meaning nagamit, no, ng buong activity, provided naman if it's a positive balance, so meaning merong natira na cash balance at the end of the year, no? But uh, when we speak of indirect method, again, the starting point is your net income. Uh, net income on accrual basis, no? meaning, uh, di ba, pag sinabi natin accrual is not necessarily naman na, na expense na, saka mo lang i-record. No? So sabi nga natin, accrual, uh, accrued expenses are expenses already incurred but not yet paid, no? So, kailangan lang natin siya i-translate into cash basis. No? So, uh, again, ang indirect method is only applicable to uh, operating activities. No? Kaya ito, pansinin mo class, uh, ang nilalagay ko lang dito is the template. No? Ano ba yung template natin to calculate using indirect method? So, of course, meron tayo dyan. Baseline natin, no? ano yung starting point natin? Always starting point natin in in, in in an indirect method is the net income. So, yun talaga starting point natin. Ano yung ina-add next? Add or minus adjustments. Ayan, hinighlight ko ng green para ma-identify natin ano ba yung mga green na yan. No? So, isa-isa natin. So, sabi natin, plus or minus adjustments. Ano ba yung adjustments na yan? Adjustments to net income. Adjustment uh, to net income to arrive uh, to your cash basis, no? So, ano na yan? Una, revenue and expenses which increase or decrease the net income without cash flow effect, no? So, good example nga natin is depreciation, no? Depreciation expense, nag-record ka ng expense pero wala ka naman na, na wala ka namang binayaran talaga. So, meaning, nabawasan ng net income mo pero wala ka naman talagang cash na binayad. So, in, uh, ang kailangan natin ngayon gawin is we'll need to add it back. No? So, ina-add back natin yung depreciation to your net income. Next, ano pa yung uh, other group under the adjustment? No? So, number two, uh, revenue or expenses which increase or decrease the net income with cash flow. But in another section of statement of cash flow. O class, wag malilito ha. Dito sa number two na green, so meaning number two na adjustment, revenue or expenses which increase or decrease the net income, meron ng cash flow at, the, uh, at this time. no? But it should be reported in another section. So meaning, 
dapat nasa investing siya or dapat nasa financing siya. Kasi ayaw nga natin mangyari na magkakaroon tayo ng double take up, no? Kasi at the end of the uh, at the end of the day, kailangan tie up tayo dun sa ending cash balance natin no? or dun sa net uh, movement natin. So imagine, nilagay mo na siya sa operating, nilagay mo pa siya sa investing. Nako. Um mahirapan ka sa reconciliation na. Kaya yun yung ayaw natin mangyari. That's why uh, we're, we are uh, creating this template. Basically, this is your guide. That's why I uh, named it as cheat sheet. Kasi ito na yung magiging cheat sheet natin. No? Later on, uh, malaman mo paano, paano yung use ng cheat sheet. Kasi hindi na ako magme-memorize. Kasi ito na talaga yung gagamitin kong guide. No? And the number three, also still under adjustments no affects cash flow without net income effect no so example of this is dividends received from investment in associate no um later on we'll also discuss more about this investment in associate no kasi when we're uh, receiving dividends from investment in associate we're not actually getting um uh I mean, it will it will have an impact to our net income. Pero wala tayong na-receive na. So later on, we'll also cover that. And uh, here, uh, next item, plus minus net change in trade. Trade, uh, current asset and current liabilities. So ito, lang, ito na yung pinaka-guide natin. If it's an increase in current asset, or a decrease in current liabilities, ang gagawin daw natin is we deduct it. If it's a decrease in current asset or increase in current liabilities, add naman, yeah, add naman natin. So, paano ba yan? So, sabi natin ng inventory. Inventory natin ng January 1 is um, 200. Dating ng December 31, naging 500. So, question, is there an increase or decrease? O, kitang-kita naman natin, no? So, from five, from 200, naging 500. So, meron tayong increase na 300. So, in indirect method, itong 300 na to, since this is an increase in current asset, so, inventory is, an, is a current asset, no? So, we have to deduct it, no? Okay? So, paano naman pag liability? So, AP. Sabihin natin ng AP natin ng January 1 is 100. Pero naging 50 na lang by December 31. So, meron ditong decrease of 50. No? So, a decrease in liability, decrease in current liability, so deduction. No? So, kung napansin nyo class, with this guide, eh, hindi mo na kailangan mag-analyze, no? Kasi meron ka ng pinaka-guide. Ito na yung uh, pinaka-template natin, no? So, later on, we'll cover more of this, no? Okay? So, aside from the basic concept, ito naman yung uh, sabi natin ng tricky part ng cash, uh, cash flow statement natin, no? So, these are items with alternative treatments, no? Meaning, ito yung default. If the problem is silent, dito mo siya ilalagay. If not, or I mean, if the problem leads you to put it in investing, then by all means, put it under investing activities. So sabi ko lang palagi, you just have to follow the problem. So dividend receive. No? So imagine class, no? uh, dividend receive is actually from uh, your investment. No? So uh, dahil nga nag-invest ka, part dapat siya ng investing activity. But then, dividend received is also uh, under operating activity. No? Uh, interest received. So, ito naman, nagpa-utang ka, meron kang interest income. And because interest income is driving your net income, that's why it's classified under operating activity. Again, if the problem is silent. No? Uh, if the problem leads you to put it under investing, kasi nga nag-invest ka, nagpa-utang ka, uh, that's why you're receiving interest, no? Interest income. 
Next is interest payment, no? So sabi natin kanina, pag nangutang ka, to copy uh, to nangutang ka, no? So, so that's from uh, sabi natin bonds. Of course, magbabayad ka ng interest, no? And since interest also uh, falls under uh, operating activity kasi nga nagde-decrease yung uh, net income mo because of interest expense, no? So again, if the problem is silent, ang default natin is operating activity. If not, the alternative treatment is financing activity. So dividend payment, oh, ito naman, dividend payment, uh, default natin is financing activity. Dividend payment kasi uh, uh, we're paying, no? paying our shareholders no? dividend. No? Eh, E naalala mo kanina, sabi natin, under financing activity, this include your shareholders' equity and long-term liabilities. No? Again, if uh, the problem is silent, uh, the default is financing activity. If not, uh, the alternative is operating activity. So later on, uh, I also prepared a problem no? uh, around this. Okay. What are the other special issues? No? So investment in associate. Ito naman yung uh, sabi natin na company A, same umbrella, company B. So same umbrella sila. Uh, ano bang good example? Uh, San Miguel owns Pure Foods. Tama ba? Pure Foods and at the same time Petron. Ngayon si Pure Foods meron siyang investment kay Petron. No? So yun na, investment in associate. No? So when it comes to share in net income, ano ba yung entry natin? So debit investment in associate, credit invest investment income. No? So ito yung uh, entry natin uh, to record the share in the net income of the associate. No? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if it's a direct method, we ignore it. So meaning we don't... Uh, uh, include it in our uh, calculation. If it's an indirect, so we have to deduct it. No? Uh, what if it's a uh, uh, dividend from associate naman? So meaning um, the associate pays dividend this time. No? Of course, dahil nga ang entry natin is debit cash, credit investment in associate. So meron kang cash receipt. No? So under the direct method, kailangan mong increase yung and there's a cash inflow, no? So, dahil may na-receive kang uh, cash in this uh, case, no? So, it's an addition from receipt, no? If it's an indirect method, so you have to uh, add it, no? Okay? Okay, so, another special issue eto pinaka-guide ulit natin. If it's a proceeds from sale, sabi natin add under direct method. Acquisition of trading securities, sabi natin deduct under the direct method. If it's unrealized gain and realized gain, as well as unrealized loss and realized loss, ignore. Oh, this is not applicable. And now, if... Um, under indirect method, all we need to do is ignore everything. Why? Because this is part of trade current assets. And sabi natin, dahil nga uh, trade current assets siya, ang focus lang natin is net movement. Alright? Hindi na natin kailangan isa-isain pa yan. Ang kailangan lang natin malaman, increase ba siya or decrease siya? Diba? Naalala nyo yan? Okay? Uh, so we go now to the different problems, no? So again, to reinforce what we've discussed uh, in the earlier part, no? So first part will be the, the theoretical part. Uh, let's now go to the different discussion problems, no? So I prepared eight discussion problems, actually nine, I think. Yep. Nine discussion problems to illustrate all of all of the concepts that I, that we have discussed earlier no? so number one uh, sample problem number one so 
an entity provided the following information for the current year. So we have the uh, your dividend received. So basically, the requirements are what is the net cash provided by operating activities, uh, net cash used in investing activities and financing activities. No, so ano method to? Parang mabilis lang to, no? So this is direct method no so again in direct method we're just itemizing so meaning from this list kailangan lang natin identify ano ba diyan yung operating yung investing at saka financing no so pag-usapan natin siya isa-isa so basically this is the problem uh just put it in here in the excel file para at least mas madali natin mapag-usapan number one basically we're being asked to uh, identify or itemize these uh, activities as operating investing and financing let's go uh each let's go to each item no so let, let's do it one by one so number one dividend received so gantong gagawin natin no dividend received meron na tayo dito kanina cheat sheet no? so sabi natin dividend received if the problem is silent, let's put it under operating activity. So, is it inflow or cash flow? So, meron tayong na-receive na dividend. No? So, it's an inflow. No? So, that's why positive. No? So, okay tayo dyan. Uh -huh. Cash received from customers. No? Again, this is part of the operating activity. Sabi natin, operating activity uh, if it's um, from, I mean, activities from the primary source of revenue. No? So in this case, uh, sales, no? sales from customer. Of course, we have to pay our suppliers. And again, uh, that's part of uh, the operating activity. No? But this time, dal nagbayad tayo, so cash outflow. No? So that's why uh, negative. Okay, so sana nakakasunod pa. Interest received. So, yan. Part of it ng cheat sheet natin. Sasabi natin, interest received should uh, form part of the operating activity. So, ganun class, no? Meron tayong mga cheat sheet dito. Meron tayong mga guides. But at least, anyway, the concept, I've already discussed it er earlier, no? So, at least right now, we're just reinforcing it by illustrating it, uh, uh, by illustrating it uh, with different problems no so interest received again under operating activity interest paid on long term debt no so again interest paid sabi natin if it's if the problem is silent so let's put it under <coughs> operating activity okay so dahil tayo yung nagbayad so that's deduction so that's cash outflow ngayon pag-usapan natin tong proceeds from issuing share capital. Parang ano tayo, no? Alam mo na agad na dahil nga, dahil uh, there's share capital involved, alam mo na, na part siya ng equity. So, talaga na ba siya under financing activity? It's proceeds from issuing share. So, meaning nag-issue ka ng share, nagbenta ka ng share, meron ka na-receive na money. So that's inflow, no? so 4 million inflow. Next, proceeds from sale of long-term investments. So again, kanina pinag-usapan natin no? what will fall under investing activity. Sabi natin, your non-current assets. So that includes long-term investments. No? So proceeds, so meaning binenta mo. So, meron ka na receive naman. No? So, that's inflow under investing activity. Next, cash paid for equity investment at fair value using the uh, other comprehensive income. So, ito ha. There are two types kasi of uh, investment. No? The one is held for trading, meaning uh, the intention is to... Uh, is to sell it no? in in a short short uh, span of time no? and the other one is uh, fair value at, uh, under the other 
comprehensive income. So meaning, uh, you're holding it uh, long term. So yun lang yung difference niya. Na. So again, if it's um, an equity investment or investment held for trading, alam na agad natin na uh, we should classify it as operating. No? Now, uh, if it's an investment long term, long term investment, sabi natin, it should be under investing activity. Okay? So I hope that that's clear, no? Income taxes paid. Ito, no? Sabi ko kanina, since income, in, I mean, taxes, tax expenses generally will decrease your net income. At dahil nga net income, pinag-uusapan natin operating activity, no? So, yun yung default, no? So, under operating activity. Again, if the problem tells you otherwise, no? Sabi ng problem, lagay siya sa investing or financing, then by all means, we need to follow the problem. No? But in this case, dahil nga silent yung problem, so we have to put it under the default, no? which is the operating activity. Next, proceeds from long-term debt. So, yan na. Uh, Paulitin natin sinasabi, under financing activity, it's, um, it includes uh, your equity and long-term liabilities. No? So long-term debt will fall under financing activity. This is a proceeds, so meaning ng utang ka, may na-receive kang pera. So that's 2,500,000. No? So kunin mo lang yung sum ng lahat. So that's 2 million for operating activity, 1.5 million for investing activity, and finally, 6.5 million uh, for financing activity. No? So that's problem number one. I think so. Goro, let's do problem number two. So it's still the same, no? Uh, so the requirements are what is the net cash provided by operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. But uh, try to observe class, no? Uh, in here, the data provided includes increase and decrease in working capital. No? So meaning, uh, ang kailangan natin gamitin this time is indirect method. Okay, so let's go to my Excel file. Oh, dahil indirect method, ang gagawin ko na, ang gagawin ko na agad, kunin ko na agad itong cheat sheet natin. No? Itong pinaka-template natin. Kasi ito yung template natin, ito yung guide natin to uh, calculate using the indirect method. No? Analyst ko pa, no? Nandiyan na siya kanina. Anyway, oh, so at yung problem natin again, I just uh, place it here in the Excel file para at least mas madali natin siyang makalculate, no? Pero just the, just the same, isa-isain pa rin natin, no? So number one, uh, pakita ko lang, no? So, yan pa rin naman yung problem natin. Ayan, diba? Inisa-isa lang natin siya dito. Okay. So, ang question is, ulit, operating, financing, investing. Pero before we go to financing and investing, pag-usapan muna natin yung operating. No? Under indirect method, ano nga yung baseline? Ayun. Net income. Provided by yung net income. Yes, ayun. So, 8 million. So, okay tayo dyan. Alam natin kung saan nakuha. Next, depreciation. So, dito tayo sa green. Yung adjustment. Inisa-isa natin. Ano nga yung mga adjustment? So, sabi natin depreciation. So, ayun yung depreciation. Next, gain on sale of equipment. Yung gain on sale of equipment, part siya ng revenue and expenses without uh, cash flow effect, or sorry, with cash flow, but in another section of uh, statement of cash flow. No? So, kaya, uh, pag-isipan ulit natin, no? add ba siya or deduct? Gain. No? So, pag meron kang gain, ano bang nagiging impact nun sa net income? Is it increase or decrease? No? Dahil gain siya, 
it actually increases your net income. No? So dahil nga uh, wala naman talagang cash flow involved. Sorry. May cash flow involved pero hindi siya dapat dito sa operating income. No? So ganun ulit. No? So kaya ginagawa natin is dinedadak natin siya from the net income to arrive dun sa cash basis natin. No? So wag palirito. And then finally, doon tayo sa, mga, uh, sa yellow na. No? So net uh, change in trade current and current liabilities. No? Isa-isay natin to plus. So number one, accounts receivable. Ito, ha? Ang accounts receivable daw natin is nag-decrease ng 2 million. Ia-add ba natin or i-deduct natin? So sa ginawa nating uh, cheat sheet class, Sabi natin, if it's a decrease in current assets, we have to add it. So, addition. So, that's why 2 million is added here. Inventory. So, inventory natin, sabi natin, uh, 3.5 million increase. So, sabi natin, pag nag-increase ang asset, increase in current asset, deduct. So, that's why deduction. No? So, 3.5 million deduction. Next, trade accounts and notes payable. Again, this is still uh, current liabilities naman. So, saan natin titignan yung current liabilities? Sabi natin, pag ang current liabilities nag-increase, so we have to add it. No? So, 4 million addition. And finally, income tax payable. No? Income tax payable, sabi natin nag-decrease. So, payable siya sa so liabilities. Increase, I, sorry, decrease in current liabilities, so deduction. So, okay na tayo ngayon sa lahat ng components ng operating income. So, the answer is 11 million. No? That's for operating income. How about financing? So, na-identify na natin itong mga to. Uh, financing, sabi natin, it includes equity and uh, uh, long-term uh, liabilities, no? So, ito, reissuance of treasury shares, no? So, alam mo na agad na uh, part siya ng equity natin. So, re proceeds, so 1 million, no? So, addition. Dahil may na-receive tayong cash. Next, retirement of preference shares, no? So, meaning, we're retiring it. So, uh, we're paying the uh, preferred shareholders no for their shares no? so meaning uh, meron tayong cash outflow kasi nga nagbabayad tayo sa preferred uh, stockholders natin no? okay ito class how about this one cash dividend declared <coughs> sorry so cash dividend declared tandaan while it's true na dapat e financing siya but since this is just declaration, so meaning wala pang payment, no? So in cash flow statement, in preparation of your cash flow statement, this will be ignored, no? Again, dahil declaration pa lang, wala pa talagang payment, no? So wala pang cash uh, involved, all right? Okay. And next, of course, pag investing, ang, ang sabi natin, it in uh, involves transactions relating to uh, your non-current assets. No? So, pag non-current assets, ayan na nga. Purchase of equipment for cash, 7 million. Dahil purchase, meron kang cash outflow. So, deduction. And next is proceeds from sale of equipment. So, baka nga, dahil bumili ka ng bago, binibenta mo na yung luma. No? So in that case, that will still fall under investing. No? Uh, but this time, dahil binenta mo, may na-receive kang money. So that's cash inflow no? of 2 million. So get the sum. So that's 3 million for financing and 5 million under investing. So kung napansin yung class, ang ginagawa natin is we're, we're identifying it uh, one by one, no? even under the indirect method. No? So like ito, uh, ang parang key uh, 
keyword natin dito is shares eh, no? eh, alam natin pag uh, shares equity yan eh, pag alam alam natin na pag equity and long term liabilities it will fall under financing kasi ano naman nagpo-fall ng investing uh, non current uh, assets no so diyan naman papasok yung fine uh, investing So that's uh, problem number two. Tignan ngayon natin yung problem number three. So in problem number three, ito class, isa lang ang pinapahanap sa atin. Net cash provided by operating activities. And this time, binibigay ulit sa atin yung increase and decrease. No? So parang um, just by looking at the problem, alam na agad natin na ang pinapagamit sa atin na method is what? Indirect method. No? So, let's do problem number three. Okay. So, again, dahil indirect method siya, ang ginagawa natin is kinukuha na natin agad yung cheat sheet natin. No? So, ito na siya agad. And then, uh, ito, ito naman yung uh, from the problem, I just place it in Excel file para at least mas madali natin ma- uh, ma-check yung solution. No? So again, in indirect method, ang baseline natin is net income. Pero, if we go to the problem, so here's the problem. If we look at the problem, actually, there is no net income provided. But again, all the elements of the income statement are given. So meaning, you can solve for the net income. So paano ba yan? Of course, we'll start with the net, uh, we'll, with the sales revenue. So we have a sales revenue of 5 million. Cost of goods sold of 2.75 million. We have depreciation and amortization of 500,000. Ayan, wala pa naman ako sinasolve. I mean, wala pa ako ginagawa. Wala pang analysis involved. I'm just putting it all together to uh, calculate the net income. No? Next, we have gain on sale of equipment, uh, 200,000. Gain, no? So, it will increase your uh, net income. So, kaya ina-add natin siya. Unrealized loss, so loss, no? since this is loss, it will decrease your net income, so that's why negative. Then interest expense on short-term debt again, expense, so it will uh, decrease your net income, that's minus. So get the sum para mag-arrive ka sa net income mo of 1.55 million. So class, meron na tayong baseline. So pwede na natin i-apply ngayon yung cheat sheet natin. No? Ito yung pinaka-guide natin. No? So again, meron na tayong net income, 1.5. Gawin na natin yung mga next steps. What are the, what are the steps? No? Number one, let's find out what are the adjustments, no? necessary adjustments to arrive uh, to your cash basis. No? Kasi remember, uh, in calculating the net income, we're actually using the accrual basis. No? Um, so, alisin natin ngayon yung mga adjustments. No? Identify natin ngayon lahat ng adjustments. So, number one, uh, depreciation. Of course, ilang best natin na pag-usapan yan, uh, we're recording depreciation expense. It's uh, decreasing your net income, but there's no uh, cash effect. No? Kasi wala naman talagang cash involved in depreciation. So we're adding it back. Next, gain on sale of equipment. While in gain on sale of equipment, meron ka na-receive na money. Di ba? Uh, while it's true na may cash effect, Tandaan, dahil nga equipment nung pinag-uusapan natin, saan nga siya talaga nakalagay dapat? Under investing or financing? Under in, uh, investing. No? So, we are including it in here para hindi magkaroon ng double take-up. No? 
So, deduction. Kasi nga, it's uh, increasing your net income pero dahil nga walang cash involved, we're adding it back. I mean, we're deducting it. No? Okay? So, that's the green portion. That's the adjustment. Let's you now go to the net change in trade current and current assets and current liabilities. Of course, class, um, in here, it's important to know uh, your different accounts, no? So, accounts receivable. Uh, is it current asset or current liability? Kasi, uh, ito yung magiging guide natin, no? So, current, uh, I mean, accounts receivable, sabi natin, decrease. Decrease ng 70,000. So, dito na agad natin titignan. Sabi, pag decrease in current asset addition daw. So, kaya naka-add yung 70. Okay? Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, wala na masyadong analysis dahil meron na tayong guide. No? Inventory, again, it's current asset increased daw by 50,000. So, sabi natin, pag nag-increase ang current asset, deduct. So, ayan. Deduction of 50,000. Accounts payable. No? Accounts payable is liability. Current liability. So, sabi natin, 45,000 increase. So, increase in current liabilities addition. So, plus 45,000. Next, interest payable. Interest payable is decrease of 15,000. So, this is current liability. Decrease in current liability is deduction. So, minus 15,000. And finally, equity investment, again, held for trading. No? So, because it's being held for trading, this is current asset. So, decrease in current asset, sabi natin, addition. So, that's plus 100,000. Let's just get the sum. So, we have 2 million pesos net cash provided by operating activities. So, I hope you're now, uh, you can now appreciate the use of this uh, cheat sheet, no? Like I said, and daming uh, concepts behind this cheat sheet. Ito na yung pinaka-guide natin, no? Para at least mas mapabilis, mas magpadali yung analysis, at saka uh, to aid us, no? In involving indirect method, in solving cash flow, uh, operating activities using indirect method. Pero dahil gusto ko mas happy ka pa at mas maintindihan mo pa yung concept, let's try another one. No? So discussion problem number four, again, given are the increase and decrease of these accounts and the net income. No? So let's just compute for the net cash provided by operating activities. So sample problem number four. Okay. Siguro ang gawin natin, isa-sign muna natin, kasi di ba, uh, uh, we have the cheat sheet, pero tandaan yung uh, net change dito, kailangan daw current asset and current liabilities lang, no? Siguro isa-isa natin, ano ba yung classification ng bawat account um, included here? No? So number one, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, alam mo na agad yan, na current asset yan. Allowance for doubtful account, this is a contra account to your accounts receivable. Kaya nga, di ba, uh, we are reporting accounts receivable net of the allowance for doubtful accounts. Allowance for doubtful accounts, basically class, ito yung uh, in-estimate natin, no? So, out of our total receivable, magkano dyan yung hindi na natin makakulat? So, basically, that's uh, allowance, kaya nga doubtful, no? So, you're in doubt whether you can still collect it, no? Next, of course, prepaid rent expense is uh, current liability, current asset. Accounts payable is uh, current liability. Accrued expenses is current liability. Equity investment of FDOCI, fair value uh, under other 
comprehensive income. Again, um, this is being held uh, for long term. No? So, and with that, non-current siya. Okay, so naisa-isa na natin siya. Again, ano nga yung pinaka-baseline natin under indirect method? It's the net income. Given by net income, yes, it's 7 million. So that's 7 million. Lagay ko lang siya, 7 million. And plus, um, meron bang mga items for adjustments? Itong green, meron ka ba nakita dyan? So in this case, medyo straightforward yung problem. There are no uh, adjustments, no? So there are no uh, depreciation or, or uh, gains or dividends in, involved, no? So in, with that, uh, we just need to uh, get all this net change in trade, current assets, and current liabilities, no? Isa-isayin ulit natin. So accounts receivable, sabi, uh, there's an increase of 400,000. Increase in current asset, sabi natin, deduction. So minus 400,000. Allowance for doubtful account, no? So this is contra asset, na? So dal contra asset siya, increase ang isipin ko, dal contra asset siya, as if liability siya. Ganun na lang, no? Para mas mabilis ang, ang analysis natin. So, dahil may increase in liability, so sabi natin, add. Okay? I'm not saying that allowance for doubtful account is current liability, ha? Ang sinasabi ko, allowance for doubtful account is a contra account. Meaning, kung contra account siya, uh, ang treatment po sa kanya is against the normal side of the account, no? So, kung accounts receivable is, ang normal side is debit, since this is a contra account, so, dinededuct mo siya dun sa uh, uh, accounts receivable, no? So, sabi ko nga sa inyo, depende siya dun sa pinaka uh, mother account, no? So, mother account is accounts receivable, it's an asset, Allowance for doubtful account is a contra account to your accounts receivable. So in that case, let's treat it as if a liability. At, at least, pwede pa rin natin magamit yung cheat sheet natin. Pero ang tandaan, hindi ko sinasabi na allowance for doubtful account is uh, classified as liability. Sinasabi ko lang uh, for the sake of uh, discussion and for the sake of... Uh, uh, making sure that we can still use this uh, template. No? Let's state it that way. No? So, yun, yun ang tandaan. Na. Baka mamaya, makuta ko na current liability, of course, not. Na. Okay. So, prepaid rent expense. So, sabi natin, current asset. Decrease in current assets. So, saan siya? Decrease in current assets. So, addition. Okay na tayo dyan. Accounts payable. Accounts payable, sabi natin, decrease, uh, increase of 500,000. So, saan ang increase? Addition. So, meron ka siyang addition of 500,000. Accrued expenses, expenses already incurred but not yet paid. No? So, meaning, uh, sabi nag-increase daw by 250, decrease by 250. So, nasaan yung? Decrease in current liabilities, ayun, deduction. So that's why, minus 250. Okay, so get the sum. So that's 7,150,000. So that's your net cash provided by operating activities. So that's problem number four. Diba? Uh, I hope at this stage, no, you can appreciate this cheat sheet. Ito ang template natin no? in, in solving uh, uh, indirect method. No? Kasi, like I said, direct method is really straightforward. You just have to itemize and then classify it. Classify each activity, whether operating, financing, and investing. And I'm sure at this stage, you're, uh, you know already no? which transaction should be classified as to those three uh, classifications. No? Pero just the same, ituloy natin yung other problems, no? So at least, uh, ito na yung pinaka-practice natin, no? So, uh, because next week, uh, 
uh, of course, uh, you will have your prelim exam, no? Eh, at least ito, nire-ready na natin kayo. Uh, meron na tayong set of practice, no? You are currently the only person in this conference. Okay, so we'll go now with, uh, let's go now to problem number five. So in problem number five, ito, medyo tricky. So basahin natin class, ha, what's required? What is the net income for the current year? So imagine na, uh, in indirect method, our baseline is the net income. Now, in this problem, it provided for the net cash provided by operating activities of 4 million. Binigay yung net cash provided, ang pinapasolve sa atin this time is yung net income. Ang tanong, meron ba tayong way to calculate that? Of course, meron. No? Kasi nga, provided lahat, even yung net cash provided by operating activities, kailangan lang natin mag-work back. No? Pag-usapan natin itong problem number 5. <clears throat> okay? So in problem number 5 plus, Still using the uh, template that we have for indirect method, but this time, ang meron tayo is yung net cash. No? Provided sa atin yan, it's 4 million. So, nandiyan siya na yan. Ngayon, kailangan lang natin mag-work back. So, ano ba yung mga net change? No? Kung napansin mo, ando doon sa taas yung hinahanap sa atin. No? Pero isa-isa yung one natin. Of course, meron tayo... Uh, prepaid expenses, sabi decrease. So kung decrease daw ang current asset, ano nga uh, kailangan gawin? Decrease in current assets, so addition. Okay na tayo dyan. Uh, next, AR. So accounts receivable. Okay, Buuin ko na to ha, para hindi na ako ito. Prepaid expenses. Accounts receivable. Inventory. Accounts payable. Accounts receivable. Uh, Sampe accounts receivable. Decrease. Also, oh, they'll decrease in asset addition. Okay, tayo dyan. Inventory. Inventory is uh, increase, no? So, they'll increase in current assets. Sabi natin, deduction. Eh? And finally, accounts payable. It's a current liability decrease of 150,000. Balikan natin. Current liabilities decrease, so deduction, so minus 150,000. Punta na natin ngayon, ano yung mga adjustments involved? No? Una, uh, ito bang all purchases of inventory, do we have to include that here? Remember class, no? purchases, that's part of your cost of sales, no? meaning that's already included here. No? So we don't really need to... Uh, include that in, in our calculation. No? So, that bullet number two is uh, depreciation during the year was 900,000. So, that's part of the adjustment to depreciation. So, we have to add it back. And of course, equipment was sold during the year at a loss of 300,000. Pag-usapan natin to. Kanina kasi, ang um, uh, example natin is gain, but this time loss down. No? So, ano nga yung effect pag merong loss in uh, sale of equipment? No? Nagbenta ka ng uh, property, plant, and equipment. No? In this case, equipment. Pero at a loss. No? So, meaning uh, we, you have to recognize a loss in your income statement. No? And since it's a loss, your net income Ano nangyari sa net income natin? Nabawasan. No? So, in this case, we have to add it back. So, 300,000. Okay. So, lahat yan na-identify na natin. 
now we just have to work back. Paano ang work back? So from 4 million, lahat ng ina-add, lahat ng ina-add, i-deduct mo. Lahat ng din i-deduct, i-add mo. So paano yun? Sige, ganito na lang. So start kay kay 4 million. 4 million minus 200 minus 100 plus 50 plus 150 minus 300 minus 900 makukuha mo is 2.7 million. Ngayon, kung hindi ka pa happy dyan, eh, kunin mo yung sum. So, ayun, 4 million din. So, meaning, uh, na-compute natin siya ng tama. Okay? So, that's problem number 5. So, imagine class, no? Because we have uh, already tried to calculate for our net operating uh, for our net cash from operating activities, ngayon parang sina challenge na tayo, no? how to calculate the net income using all this data. Let's now uh, go to problem number six. So problem number six, no? So what is the net cash provided by operating activities? No? Parang simple ng number six. Tignan nga natin. So in problem number six, ayun, nakalagay tricky. So tignan natin bakit ba siya tricky. Okay. So again, uh, the problem here is... So nakita natin may increase, decrease. No? So parang alam na agad natin na it's... Uh, using uh, indirect method. No? Kaya nilagyan natin agad yung sheet sheet natin dyan. Okay? So, pag-usapan natin siguro isa-isa. We have the net income of 7.5. Eh, alam naman natin na yun yung base natin. So, wala tayong problem dyan. Nilagyan na natin agad. Ngayon, meron kasi dito investment in shares carried at equity. So sabi doon, uh, nag-increase currently the only person in this conference. Nag-increase by uh, 550,000. Ano ba yung mga transactions that will trigger increase in investment in shares, no? Or in this case, investment in uh, in associate, no? So ito nga yung sabi kanina, sabi natin kanina, no? Under one umbrella, San Miguel Pure Foods and uh, Petron. No? So, Pure Foods, meron siyang uh, investment kay uh, Petron. No? So, pwede, pwede mangyari yun. No? So, we call that investment in associate. No? So, the increase could be um, uh, because of the sh uh, share, no? share in the net income. No? Now, what's the, what's the entry ba to uh, I mean, to record the share in the net income. No? So that's why it's highlighted in gray. So the entries are debit to investment in associate and credit investment income. Okay. Dial investment income to, and it's a credit, meaning it's increasing your net income. No? So investment, investment income under your income statement, it will increase your net income. No? So, that form part of the adjustment. Meron bang cash involved? Wala. So, this is one classic example of revenue which increase the net income but without cash flow effect. Nag-increase yung net income natin, pero walang cash flow. No? Kasi wala ako naman nakita ang cash dyan, di ba? So, it's debit investment in associate and credit investment income. So, therefore, we have to deduct it no? from the net income. So, kailangan natin siya ibawas. No? Next, um, on the... Premium. Ito muna. Sige. Accumulated depreciation caused by major repair. So, alam na agad natin. Accumulated depreciation. Ano ba yung mga... Kailan ba tayo nagre-record ng depreciation? When it's related to uh, 
uh, equipment, no? But this time, this is caused by major repair. So if it's a cost by major repair, we are capitalizing it. No? So therefore, this is an investing activity. Next, unearned interest income. So alam na agad natin yan. That's um, uh, non-current. I mean, current liability. So pasok siya dito. Sabi natin, pag current liability decrease, current liability decrease, so deduction. So ayun. And uh, ito na, premium on bonds payable. So, ano ba yung entry natin dito? So, debit premiums on bond, payable, 140,000, and then credit interest expense. No? Basically, class, uh, uh, when we say premium, no? so we're paying more than the face value of the bonds. No? So, kung bawa ang bonds is 100,000, we paid 110,000. That 10,000 will be uh, amortized throughout the life of the bond. No? So meaning, uh, in expense natin yun no? throughout the life of the bond. No? Kung ang bond is, uh, will mature in natin, 30 years, so in 30 years time, that premium of 10,000 will be spread uh, throughout the life of the bond. No? So, ano ngayon yung impact niyan? No? So, kung napansin mo, the entry that will cause a decrease in the premium is a debit to premium on bonds payable of 140 and credit of interest expense. So dahil nag-credit ka ng interest expense, ano ngayon ang nangyari sa income mo? Tandaan na, credit, interest expense. No? The normal side of an expense is debit. Kung naka-debit siya, ang naging impact niya sa in net income natin is decrease. But since it's a credit, so therefore, it increases our net income. No? So with that, we have to deduct it. No? So amortization of premium. Okay. And finally, deferred tax liability. Sabi natin, current liability increased down. So, saan nga sa cheat sheet natin yan? Uh, current liability. Current liability increase. Increase in current liability. So, addition. So, just get the sum. So the total is 6.940. No? So, that's the answer. Okay. So, that's uh, problem number six. Okay, so we still have three more problems to go. Para at least talagang at the end of this topic, eh, kain kaya mo na yung statement of cash flow. No? So discussion problem number seven. Ito naman, uh, pag-uusapan lang natin is net cash use in financing activities. Parang ano na to, kain kaya mo na to kasi... Diba, napag-usapan natin kanina, under financing and investing activities, ang method lang na allowed is direct method, no? So in that case, kailangan lang natin itemize. Kailangan lang natin isa-isahin kung financing ba to, no? So check natin yung solution for problem number 7. So in this case, isa-isay natin, class, ha? Uh, payments for bonds. So, sabi natin, di ba, pag financing, uh, it includes non-current liability at the same time your equity. No? Kasi nga, ito nga yung mga capital-inducing activities. No? So, meaning, uh, it could be from debtor. I mean, it can be from creditor and, yun nga, share, shares of stock or yung, yung owners. No? So, Say say natin, uh, payment for bonds payable with carrying amount of 5 million. Uh, nagbayad daw tayo ng bonds, no? For 4 million. So dahil nagbayad tayo, may cash outflow. So minus. <clears throat> Next, uh, payment of cash dividend declared in prior year. Oh, so dahil meron ng payment, Magbabayad tayo ng cash dividend for how much? 
2 million. So that's minus 2 million. Nagbayad tayo, meron tayong cash outflow. Next. Preference shares converted into ordinary shares. Ito class, ha? Uh, in in sh uh, shareholders' equity kasi, we have two sabi natin na basic examples of uh, classification of stocks. No? Number one is yung common stock or yung ordinary shares. Number two is preference preferred stock or ito na yung preference shares. Basically, class, ang preference preference shares, sila lang naman yung may priority over uh, dividends. No? And then less din yung liability nila. So, yun lang naman yung difference. No? So, now, in in item number three, preference shares converted into ordinary shares. No? Kino-convert lang siya, class. No? So, there's no cash involved. No? So, we have to ignore it. While this is part of the equity, sabi natin, financing is equity, sabi mo, di ba, sir, equity. And, but again, we have to analyze it. No? So, there's no cash involved, so we have to ignore it. And finally, proceeds from sale of treasury shares costing 1 million. Pero magkano natin binenta? 1.5 million. No? So, since it's a proceeds, so meaning meron tayo. in financing activities. Okay. So I'm sure uh, at this stage, alam mo na yung paano i-identify each transaction as to financing or investing. Pero sige. Uh, let's do discussion problem number eight. No? But this time, it's multiple choice uh, question. <clears throat> okay. So Excuse me. Okay. So, discussion problem number eight. So, ito siya. Ang, pinapa, ang nire require lang sa atin is net cash use in investing activities. Ano nga ulit yung mindset natin pag investing activities? Sabi natin, pag investing activities, these are related to your non-current assets. No? Okay. Isa-isay natin, acquired, but I think it's better to place the problem here. Okay. Uh, acquired equity investment for cash, yes, investing. Sabi kasi, di ba, non-current uh, asset, no? So, equity investment, so non-current asset, so... Ito yung mga investment, on, uh, investment in associate natin. No? Uh, 2 million, nag-invest ka. Ibig sabihin may cash outflow. So the, therefore, minus. <clears throat> Sold an investment with carrying amount of 2 million for cash. So nagbenta ka ng investment mo for 1.5 million. So meron kang, nag, nagbenta ka, so meron ka cash inflow. No? So addition of 1.5 million. Uh, next is acquired a one-year certificate of deposit from a bank. Okay? So, dahil uh, one-year certificate of deposit siya, we classify it as non-trade, no? So, take note class, na In investing, hindi lang siya, hindi lang kailangan uh, long-term, no? Even... Uh, current assets provided it's non-trade, no? meaning um, it's not being used in uh, in the operation. No? So, dahil non-trade siya, uh, we're including it as part of the investing activity. Main class, uh, the reason why I place it here, kasi sabi natin may default tayo, di ba? 
uh, ito yung number, uh, bullet number four, interest on the certificate of deposit received. Sabi natin, interest received, ang default daw is operating. Ha? Pero bakit ko siya nilalagay sa investing? So parang may mali na agad yan, di ba? Tignan natin yung next, collected investment. Uh, collected dividends. So, so, dividends receive ulit. Sabi natin, dividends receive, ang default is operating activity. Eh, bakit ko siya nilalagay sa investing activity? Pag in ko yung first three, ang sagot is 5.5 million. Meron ba siya sa choices? Ito, plus, ha, discarte na itong tinuturo ko, no? So, while the problem is silent, ginagayad ka na ng problem dahil wala naman siya sa choices. So therefore, you have to use the alternative. So in that case, we'll classify it as investing activity. So the interest received, sabi natin default is operating activity, but then wala nga dun sa choices. So, nilagay natin siya as investing. So, may na-receive kang interest sa addition. Meron kang na-receive na dividends. No? So, dividends receive Again, meron kang na-receive. May inflow ka sa so addition. So, we get the sum. So, in total, we have 4.7 million. So, that's the correct answer. No? So, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, but then you have this, again, uh, guide. Ito yung sabi natin, default. If the problem is silent, dito, very silent yung problem. No? But then, uh, the choices, wala eh. So that's the reason why we have uh, 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 opted to use the alternative treatment, which is to include it as part of the investing activity. And by doing that, Ayun na, may lumabas na, na sa sagot, may lumabas na sagot na, no? Amounting to 4.7 million. Okay? So that's problem number 8. Again, a uh, little bit tricky, but then um uh, there's a the guide for you. So I think it will uh, help you, no, to attack this kind of problems. Okay, so that's problem number eight, and we'll go now to problem number nine. So in problem number nine, all we have to do is classify each of this activity as to investing and financing. No? So let's do this. Uh, problem number nine. Yeah. Okay, so problem number nine, purchase of real estate for cash. So the assumption here is, uh, of course, real estate is uh, a non-current asset. No? So sabi natin, pag non-current asset, pasok siya sa under-investing. Dahil bumili ka, meron kang cash outflow, so therefore, minus. O ngayon plus, what if itong entity pala na to is nasa buy and sell ng real estate? So, dahil buy and sell ng real estate siya, hindi na siya magiging investing. Saan na siya papasok? O, diba? Buy and sell of real estate. So, papasok na siya under operating. So, kaya tandaan, kailangan uh, natin malaman ano yung nature ng business. No? But in this case, the problem is silent. Real estate is classified as property, plant, and equipment. Real estate is uh, classified under non-current asset. And therefore, we... Uh, classify it under uh, investing activity. All right. Next, cash borrowed from bank. Okay. So, nag, uh, meron uh, tayong uh, liability from a bank to, pur to purchase the real estate. No? So, the, again, that's financing. No? Dahil ano to? Uh, liability. Non-current liability. No? May na-receive tayong money, merong inflow, so therefore, add, no? Plus 5,500,000. 5, 5, Next, we have sale of investment securities for cash, no? Again, uh, this is uh, investment. 
to under investing. So we have 5 million there. Purchase of patent for cash. Patent is intangible. Intangible is part of your non-current asset. So bumili tayo ng patent. So there's a cash outflow of 1.25 million. So that's minus. No? Ito class, dividend declared. Again, uh, since this is just a declaration, wala pa talagang payment unpaid. Ayan, lagay ko pa pala dyan. So meaning there's no cash involved. No? So we have to ignore this. Next, retirement of preference shares. So retirement meaning we're just purchasing it back. Uh, so it's under financing, dahil nga equity siya. And we're paying, so meron tayong cash outflow, kaya minus 2 million pesos. Ito naman, payment of bank loan. So nangutang kanina, ngayon nagbabayad na, meron tayong cash outflow, so minus 1,500,000. Issuance of bonds available for cash. So again, uh, bonds payable, like issue tayo. So that's 3 million pesos no? uh, addition. No? All right. And finally, increase in customer's deposit. No? So this is operating activity kasi nga it involves trade. Okay, so get the sum. So we'll arrive with 1.75 million for investing, net cash use for investing activities, and the 5 million pesos cash uh, provided by financing activities. And that actually ends uh, our discussion on statement of cash flow. No? So thank you for listening and uh, I'll see you again in our next session. This has been your instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!